So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. The taboo, forbidden subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion. We might even get a little bit dirty. Warning, this podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes, because we're going to fondle your follicles. There we go. Wow. A little starter. I like that. Is that new? Oh, that's fresh. Yeah, it's brand new. That's newish. Oh, I think it is newish. It's as fresh as jackfruit right now. Yeah. It's a hot new thing. Jackfruit? <laughs> Did I hear you right? Yeah. We'll jackfruit. Come we'll come back to that later. We'll, come back. we'll circle back. <laughs> it's a party fruit. Well, welcome aboard tonight, folks. Yeah. We got a lot of sports fans. We got a lot of video game fans. We got a lot of fans of... Uh, who knows? Is that all our fans? Let Is that our cross section? Like. Yeah. We Let want us like know. what you like. Let us enjoy it. Unless you're um, in the w- good stuff. Yeah, Famicom or whatever his name yeah. is. Phil Dan? No, we're not. I don't want anything he likes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what have you been up to there? Huh? I've been drawing up a sheet. I got a nice little uh, ideas. I got some ideas going on. For tonight? Yeah. What are we going to talk about tonight? Ooh. I'm a little nervous to say it. Come on, do it. Uh, Do social it. <laughs> social Do anxiety. It. Uh, what about peer pressure? <sighs> it's tough. I don't know if I can handle it. Social anxiety. Gives me the willies just thinking about it. I can hardly look a person in the eye anymore. It's weird. Hmm. Thank goodness we're not popular. <laughs> yeah. And no one cares to look at you. <laughs> Everyone is just staring at your picture. Is that what's going on here? Yeah. Hmm. That'd be weird if you had a, a screen of just people. Like, when every time you get, like, a, a person following, they just, like, boop, a little window boop, pop up. Boop, yeah. boop, They're all boop. blinking in unison. It's just like... Phew. Yeah, it'd be really weird if everybody stared at once and <laughs> didn't say anything or avert their gaze. Yeah, it'd be weird. Just, like, a little smile every now and then. People's eyes. That's I'm telling you. I think this was a question in a previous podcast. Uh, How would uh-huh. you be able to tell an alien the way they use their eyes? Facial. Facial moves, little little tiny ticks, little weird little things. Side blinks. Not, no, not just that. Like little <laughs> little social cues, like when you, you stare at someone when you're angry at them, and you're like, and the way they're supposed to go, hmm. um, they kind of look at you but look away. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to stare them back and go, huh? Like yeah. that would be weird, that'd be real weird. They say that children learn how to actually feel like jealousy, remorse, all the uh, social anxiety <laughs> elements, self consciousness. At around, they started on like one and a half. Oh, two, geez. Oh, and then it God. ends ends at like three. So at three, they're fully hum- done. human. Great. Yeah. So you, if they has no remorse, then you're screwed. It's weird. He set the dog on fire yesterday. And I thought it was just a phase. But I didn't like the dog. So I figured it was okay. Hmm. Win-win. Actually, dog crapped in my house today. Getting you back. It's retribution. Retribution. Little does he know, if he does it enough times, we're just going to be like, he can't control himself. Put the needle in him and give him all the drugs and just, good night. Like he's going to lose. Unless he likes drugs. But no, it's no, no. Bad kind of drugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct oh, Give him a shot of morphine. I guess you can get animals addicted to bad stuff, right? I think you can. You definitely can with mice. I was going to say the H, but I don't think you can say the H on live, whatever. Of what? Um, A female hero. Oh, you can't say that? I don't know if you can. I don't. Are you allowed to say heroin? The name of the drug. We just did, but (laughs) heroin. I mean, I don't. Terrible drug. Yeah, I just think you can't promote it it or anything. You can't use it. (laughs) You can't use it on air, I believe that. (laughs) Let's wrap this podcast. Yeah. I have to change names. Have you ever been near someone who's done one of those crazy? I have young. never, um, I'll say this, I've never seen anyone have or use heroin. Okay. I do know that one of my cousins is a druggie. He has mm-hmm. been for a long time. The closest ever came to like a 
incredibly illegal substance was cocaine, and someone poured it out on a table in front of me. Well, you know, like, where else are you gonna where else are you gonna put it though? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Throw it into the air. Yeah. The cloud. Catch, catch, catch. <laughs> uh, That'd be terrible. You wouldn't have a choice at that point. No, I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> you're all an accomplice. Oh, you're coated in it. Could a cop do that? Come I into a room full of children and throw cocaine over <laughs> everyone, and then just whip out his badge and be like, "You're all coming with me." You're all going to test positive, you little shits. Hmm. I guess. I have no idea. Yeah. Hmm. He'd have to overcome some real so- serious social anxiety to do that. <laughs> uh, is this where you're leading us right now? I some actually, more social yeah, anxious? I actually oh. wanted to talk about the uh, clarifications. Any corrections from mm-hmm. last time? Did you have any? I did. I um, I claimed I came in second place. In my original oratory contest uh-huh. Uh-huh. in Scranton, freshman year, when I went with the uh, debate and speech team, uh-huh. I came in third. I don't even know why I lied about such a thing. I think I was nervous you guys would think I was like a bronze loser. So I said I came in second because that's also believable. If I said gold, someone yeah. would have looked it up. I lied. It's like old school when Frank the Tank went up there and just blacked out for five minutes. And then was it James Carville? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I don't I think... No, nope. I think the expending of resources are down. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. I actually forgot about that. That's like a really funny <laughs> thing that no one ever yeah. imitates. Underrated, I would call it. I think that mm-hmm. was perfect. No, no rebuttal. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, we have no rebuttal. James what about your? Carl. What about oh James? Yeah. What about your yeah. dishwasher? Yeah. Did you fix it? I did fix all that I was working on, but it wasn't <laughs> you, that. Well, you broke. You fixed. No, no, it didn't. It didn't break. It was a pain in the ass. But um, it's probably something else, like a control board. Hmm. I have no way of a hundred percent knowing if it is the control board, and that's like a ninety dollar piece. So, so you're done. You're just gonna change it out. Pay your <laughs> no, I'm done. I'm just gonna let someone else do it. <laughs> well, we looked it up, and the lease says a hundred bucks. Oh, so the guy. But ninety, was... I'm like, mm, whatever. Yeah, she was wrong. Hmm. Has your landlord ever been wrong about something? Have you ever had a landlord? Yeah, I've had him. Uh... The day I was moving out, they left. Uh, they come in and do the the standard inspection. I had like mm-hmm. one of the specks of food in the oven that like baked on, but it was like it was like a, a sausage, like a pepperoni sausage deal, like just in the bottom, like a tiny piece. And she said, "Oh, it's dirty," and it's like the whole apartment's dirty. So like, it was like my security deposit. So they were like, oh, "We're gonna have to hold she it." One of the they security deposits, it. exactly yeah. what it was. I knew it. Yep. So I was like, well, give me five minutes. And she stood there and over my shoulder and watched as I cleaned it to verify that it was clean. And I was just like, this is so humiliating. Right. But for how much money? Yeah. Hell yeah. It was probably worth like 150 bucks for that five minutes always- of humiliation. <laughs> well, the security deposit, security well, deposit was probably like 800, but they weren't going to yeah. get all of it. They were just going to get right, the cleaning right. fee or whatever. Probably yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Were you, were you in my um, college house? Um, like after it went to hell, I don't think so. No. Okay. Like people were like punching holes in walls. Like it got to be bad. I had that happen as well. People put posters up and I didn't notice until the end of the year. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, my roommate who we'll call Tom for now, he still here. I I used to go home for the summer and work Uh and he stayed in college. So he was my literal roommate. We're the only ones that shared a room. So we had an air conditioner set up. Mm-hmm. It was really good. And, uh, <laughs> it dripped into our room. So instead of towels on the floor, he had this great idea. He filled up this like 13 Tom. gallon trash trash can. Yeah. Uh huh. And it would just sit there and fill up to the point where it got to the tippy top and it would sometimes overflow. But Did he just he put steal towels it from back. outside. Was it like a, a trash can that was in the park? No, it was probably a bought trash can. God uh-huh. bless him. But one good day good. it fell over. And he turned around, and we had hardwood floors, and he just looked at it, and he was like, oh, I get it. Because <laughs> he was really lazy. Uh, well, he didn't get to it for like two or three days. And I don't know if you know what happens to disgusting. hardwood. Awful. It no, oh, no, no, it worked. It worked at 90-degree angle so that the floor buckled like six inches off the ground from the window all the way to the, the door. So when I came back, he had had the door in halfway stance so overnight. It jacked up the door. So it took the door off the hinges. The floor was whatever. It was we 
We ruined it. You had to submit the entire security deposit at that moment. Oh, and then he was going to sue us for like another two thousand dollars. So, Ooh. and then because he had to replace pretty much every floor in the house, like several walls. We were awful scumbags, and he should have checked on his house after a year, but he didn't. And he was like, "You guys are pretty cool. You pay your rent. Do you want another year?" And we were like, "Yeah." So we did two years of damage to that house, and so what did you pay? Took, did you pay anything? Yeah, me and Tom decided we should split it because he included like the hardwood floor and everything as like the main expense. Mm-hmm. It was like eight hundred bucks, and then like a hundred for this, hundred for this. So we did not get our security deposit back, and we owed Randy many, many dollars, and we paid him. It's like five hundred a piece, thousand total. Yeah, probably it was probably like five fifty a piece. That's not too bad, actually, for the damage you did. Right. When you think about it, we ruined everything. What's real <laughs> funny is he started, this is a house he bought as an investment. He didn't own any other houses. And he thought, let's rent it to college kids. So he rented it to a group of two guys and a girl that decorated it like a real house. Oh. Like there were dolls on the steps and oh. like signs everywhere. And when he, we showed us the house, I was like, wow, this is like a real it's adult ridiculous. house. This yeah. is crazy. I was like, I guess we could do this. <laughs> he just assumed we would do something similar. We did not. Oh, I so, never mind. Hold me. on, and and he got a divorce somewhere in the middle of <laughs> of like oh, the two years. Life so, like, has changed for Randy. His, his life, his <laughs> life went downhill, and we oh. were to blame. He oh, would just man. grunt anytime he thought about this house. So we owe you. Shout out, Randy. I lived in an apartment for the second and third year, and mm-hmm. like it was split between me and three other guys. And mm-hmm. I did little upgrades like that. I made a, a nook. I don't know when you came and saw it. I made a nook with a little table and like a lamp that I drilled into the wall. So you oh. have like a little bistro area. <laughs> I didn't think I saw a lamp there. Yeah. Oh. And then I put like a little garden that was like on these two tables. Had a little fountain and some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> like this is a total pothead thing to do. And then uh, I put glow in the dark. Like, oh, that's yeah. This you is, remember this I put over the top. a galaxy on the ceiling, and it was like draped, so it was like on the ceiling the entire way, and then down the wall. So it was like you turn on the black light, and it's just like you're in the universe. Whoa, dude! Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty rad. It's some crazy stuff. That, was that, that in like your third floor area or whatever? No, no this, this is when we had the apartment that was just one, one thing, one floor. It got a little crazy. I don't know why. Right, right. No, but I'm saying, were you on the second or third floor? Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, first floor, I, I first did... floor. It was had. Oh, was it? Okay, I thought it was higher up. Maybe it's I like six feet off the ground. ground. It's, it was a raise. Okay. Hmm. I don't know why I did all that stuff. It makes no sense. Uh, I should have been chasing women. Why we... <laughs> knows why we do any of the things we do, which yeah. brings us to peer pressures no, and social doesn't. anxieties. <laughs> Sorry. Jumping the gun here, folks. Yeah, people want to get to that main topic, but I'm just going to say, hold on a second now. Let's hold on a second. Let me clarify. So last time I said Google was number two in market capitalization. Sure. And uh, they're about $700 billion. And they are number two. I was right. Oh. Damn, that was pretty good. And then I said that um, that woman Uh who ran over her husband, she ran (laughs) over him two times. Twice. Twice, yeah. Yeah. I guess it was three times. And at that point, it was probably Third like three charm. sets, maybe. It might have been three oh, sets. Oh, back forward, back forward, back forward? Yep, I think so. The irony of it yeah. was that the reason she got convicted and sentenced to six, no, 20 years was mm-hmm. that she hired a PI to trace, to track her husband. And he was tracking her husband as she was doing it. So he filmed her do it. <laughs> <laughs> Your own PI got that evidence. Yep, yep. And then uh, Roe v. Wade back in our pregnancy one, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The, the ruling was like for the health of the mother versus the fetal viability, which is at if 20. If the fetus is going to cause, oh, go ahead, at 20 months? At, yeah, so. if the fetus was going to cause injury to the mother or if the fetus wasn't going to survive. And the, the fact there that we should have covered is that 22 weeks, the fetus has a 10% chance of living. And really? Then, That's it? Mm-hmm, and at 27 weeks the fetus is a 90% chance of, of living. Wow, that's quite the jump, huh? Mm-hmm. So the decision point is probably like right in the middle for a 50% chance. I still like the Christian idea of you can't have a, a twins now, so it's only one yeah. soul. If Hopefully. your twin splits later on in life, it, it gets half a soul. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or, or one of them gets the soul. They have to battle, yeah, they for, have it. To battle for it. 
That's the very last thing you do as a twin if you're about to die. The soul. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's just the second one to die gets it? Mm. A lot of murder attempts or like craziness or that like, you know, you're on your twin. deathbed and you're like, sorry, guess I get the soul. Hmm. That's all I have. Now we can go to our main topic, which is social anxiety. And I, I started a little bit there. I know. I get nervous. Too. I can't do this in front of like an audience. It's just, it's not me. Yeah. I don't know how you would, we would do live shows. I just, I'd freeze up. I'd just go Someone silent. should pay a lot of money to find out. <laughs> You're going to book an auditorium and pay people to sit in the seats. <laughs> so I will say I am comfortable speaking to just about anyone. I do the party scene. Party is my favorite thing in the world. You're, you're an outgoing individual. Yeah. I am. And I, I do the party thing where my favorite thing is to go to a party where I'm like, I know several groups of people. Like I go over to the crew guys and I'm like, hey guys, how about that friggin' Rowan? Am I right? And they all go, yeah, Nick. And then I walk over here and I'm like, did you guys hear the newest video games coming out? And they're all like, Nick, you get us. And I'm like, video games. <laughs> and then I go to the other area and they're like, Nick, do that funny thing. And I go, you know, I just go area to area and, and entertain everyone. That's like my thing. You live I it love up. it. Oh, I love it. It's just, mm, that's living, baby. But ironically enough, in high school, you know how I referenced oratory? oratory? Original oratory? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Part of a speech and debate club. Oh, yeah. I joined because I was afraid of like speaking out in like public. Like that was my reason to do it. And because huh. I needed to join some kind of club. So you got, and you I got, got a little remnants of uh, introvertedness right there? Check this. Um, it's been 15 years, and you get to know all these people because they all go to the all the same meets, right? Yeah. It, this doesn't occur to me as an outsider. This is happening live. I'm like, oh, we just went to Scranton, and it's all the three same people from school X and Z and and Z and Y and oh, what's his name? He's always at these things. So you start to recognize them, and then worse in my category, which was original oratory. You can just write whatever you want. It's like your life experience, and then you have to memorize it and then give it to the class as a good speech. Yeah, yeah. Do you know who won all the time? Is it he was in our school? Oh, no, no. It was a, a woman from another school, a girl at the time, a woman. She famous? She now? talked about how she was – no, no. She talked about how she was almost raped. Oh, no. You're not allowed to tell that story. That's what, exactly. That's unfair. It didn't occur to me until years later, but she won almost every one. And the first Same time story. I heard it, it – the first time I heard it, it really kind of touched me. I was like, damn, she's got guts to come up here and tell it. The second time I heard it, I was like, this is word for word, the same story. Like, I get it, it happened to you, but relax. The third and fourth time I heard it and she won, I was almost like, bitch. I'm going to raped. I didn't, of course, say any of these things. But, like, it seemed very unfair because, like, she got that emotional thing. Where it's like, as wow, heartfelt as she's you can coming. be every time. Exactly. And, and she would, like manipulated people man. people might say i'm terrible but no like she would laugh and have a good time afterwards and i think she would like play it up for the she knew how to get the, oh, she the gold knew it. and she got gold oftentimes let me just say that wow you should do you know what her name was i have no idea i'd only know her by her almost raped tale jesus sounds terrible you gotta wait for her later in life when she comes out about something else that happened she might be telling the same story. I don't know. Maybe she's going to be elected to government. It's going to be word for word. He's going to apply it to the <laughs> politician. <same> story. <laughs> it has nothing to do with politics. I'm like, I've heard this before. Hmm. But yeah, everyone did um, weird stuff. and uh, But they were all anecdotes and had like, you know, beginnings and ends. And like my uncle taught me never to drink and drive or something like that. Uh, people would do. I didn't realize you had to do like this emotional hook. Like, I thought it was just well-written piece, well-spoken. <laughs> How naive. It was all the human element. Like, I was almost raped. Uh, the other famous one, what was it? Oh, I saw my uncle die or something. So, me, an idiot, I wrote... You can't even I know, exactly. Hold like, on. You have to make I, up an I event. I know. Well, I don't know if they did or didn't. I'm not saying either or. I was such a jackass. I wrote about uh, fear of the unknown. And how it haunts man in his darkest hour. <laughs> people are always like weird. And like I have to stand in front of these people where I'm like usually a cool guy and I'm surrounded by nerds. So I figured I'm going to be the coolest. Yeah. I ended up being like the nerdiest. I was like the unknown, <laughs> excuse me, is what makes people afraid. They don't know what will happen 
to they're afraid. And I like how I just old remember are you in this? like this is high school, freshman year. Uh so what is it are you sixteen? Fourteen? Uh, 14. Either way, I was 14, like, 14. I was not very good at it, and it, it taught huh. me a lot. How many how people I were you talking to at the time? Did you? Oh, get there's only like a little bit, but like there's like 12 people in the room. That's it, and like a oh. moderator or two. Exactly, but it still was scary because they're all telling stories, and I could tell they were all better because they were playing the human element. Like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they had a plan. They were going into this with a plan. They got I wrote some a stupid feedback, and then they exactly. Oh, they they were they were smart. They were working the system. Me, I'm some chopped liver walking in here trying to talk about some unknown bullshit and they were like do you remember uh, i think it was sophomore year maybe julius caesar's speech Everyone i do it speak. was it was freshman year and i can That's freshman year you can remember <laughs> i remember the ones one of them mine was terrible i'll say i'm not good socially mm-hmm. so i remember like i got this i'm gonna go up there and then the moment i go up there i'm like every other word I'm like ah Ooh, uh, I, um, and then by the end of it, I was just like, I don't care. Give me the hell off of here. <laughs> like, I'm done. So you're 14, 15 years old. You have to remember the Brutus Julius Caesar speech, right? Uh-huh, yeah. And actually, no, 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 the Brutus speech about Julius Caesar after he died. Uh-huh. And it was a play on, you know, and Brutus, he was an honorable man, but he left us and blah, blah, blah. And he was so honorable and he'd go on and on. And you had to memorize that whole speech and the whole class had to give it. And I still remember the kid drew. Who sat somewhere near us um, totally did not prepare even one iota, and he was he was a cool dude like like athletic cool like I don't do school like this is dumb. Mm-hmm. He's sitting back there and they call on him and he goes up there and I could tell he like had the paper and he was trying to read from it. He's like, no, you gotta memorize it. And he's like, oh man, oh come on. And he's sitting up there. And he's <laughs> like, he's like Julius Caesar. He was an honorable man. And he's sitting there, like, looking at the class, waiting for feedback. And yeah. we're like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you know what? Brutus, too. <laughs> he's, like, going on. He's, like, remembering little bits of the speech. And he would just, like, look up and point. And at one point, he was like, he was like, we were sad when he left. And he, he's looking around. Matter of fact, we wept. Matter of fact, he wept. Because <laughs> it was funny to remember that back home because the word wept is in there. And he it's just a, was like, matter of fact, he Here's wept. the line. Here's the line. <laughs> People were dying. Okay, go ahead. When that the poor have cried, Caesar, Caesar hath wept. I couldn't even say it right. So like at that, that line, he's like, the poor cried. You know, matter of fact, he wept. He wept. <laughs> and it was just a funny thing. He like remembered to remember, but he, he just remembered that little inkling. And to the point where I heard he got a B plus. It's just because of that one line. Matter of fact. Oh, because he was funny. He went yeah. with it. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. teacher, that yeah. teacher at that time really was not a hard yeah. grader. Yeah. He enjoyed it. Same class where we had to draw a scene from Gladiator. Mm-hmm. His breastplate. His so breastplate. Art- Arturo and another of his champions. Arturo or something. and Genemis. Uh, something yeah, like who that. knows? Close. That's going to be a correction. Sure. That's, I mean, that happened in the movie, too. He was like, Arturo and the... <laughs> no one knows in the video. <laughs> yeah. Argento. Argento. It is Argento. It's Argento yeah. like the cheese or Argento like the horse? Argento the horse, I think. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. So well, when you give these speeches, on. yeah. So when you give these speeches, oh, what, what would happen? You get like heart palpitations, <laughs> a little sweaty, you know, adrenaline, nervous, pumping. like harder swallow type deal. Like I'm swallowing a lot. I'm like, uh, I gotta think about swallowing. Then I gotta like, all right. And then um, we gotta um, yeah. And then like, I just didn't feel any time you get into that zone, you're so not thinking about the thinking. other people. You start thinking about too much. You overthink. Like so when I'm at a party, just, like I said, talking to the, the video game people, the rowing crew, like the hockey guys, like it's just whatever flows, flows. And there's no worry. I, there's no wrong thing you can say. That's the beauty of that situation. Hmm. When you're in the other situation, you think there's a wrong thing to say. And so you get so worked up trying not to say the wrong thing that you just still and talk like this and you're nervous, but you're going to go through a few parts real quick and then – um. Uh, we don't know, but in the end, and then you're like looking around the room and some people are not paying attention. In fact, most probably aren't because it's not good speech, but you think that's on you more. So you're like, yeah. and anyway, <laughs> you're talking loud. You're, all of a sudden you're aware of the volume of your voice. You're like, too loud, too loud, too loud. Anyway, <laughs> it's like you're just you're overthinking everything. You're like, do I usually pause this much when I say something? I don't know. So that's what, do you, what happens. What, what do you try to do to compensate for that? Like what? Are there any like solutions that you came up with to, that you 
you could do this better now what, or could you do what i do, do is i think about how meaningless life is <laughs> it sounds, the sounds nihilism I, a nihilism. little bit though think about it i mean so what if you get this wrong like nobody's gonna change because of it unless you no, do a really good not job. at all in fact then i think like oh remember when my kid shit all over his pants and it got up the back of his seat and then it was all over the car seat and I tried to move him out but it got all over my hand and then the dog ran because the leash was off or something and then I was like Jesus and I dropped my keys and I hit my head on the thing and now there's shit on my hand and I bang my head <laughs> and like you think all that and you're like who cares about the goddamn speech but you bring that attitude to the speech you know what yeah, I'm saying no, I, I agree. It, it never hits the level of what real life will so eventually in your exactly. course of life you're going to hit something that's much more important and much more powerful or painful or awful or great or terrible. It's just the peaks and valleys of life are so much bigger than this stupid ass speech. I did one of my, uh, I guess, bucket list things, which is uh, I played an instrument in front of almost uh, probably like 100, and, 100 people, maybe. Battle of the Bands type deal? Yeah, the Battle of the Bands. I was playing a ukulele. There's one other ukulele player that was better than me, so she was keeping <laughs> pace. <laughs> and we were awful. We had the lowest score. But at, at the beginning, I looked around and I was just like, this is pretty cool. You're on a raised platform and everyone can mm -hmm. see you and everyone's prepared. And I didn't – I only screwed up like one thing and I corrected right away. So, oh, like, Dude, did anyone know? Chances no, are they didn't. Yeah, especially they couldn't even hear me. me. No. <laughs> that's kind of – that's kind of a cool thing. What was it about – again, what was it? A battle – I didn't – It was like a battle I, of the bands that okay. um, my work did and there were – Oh, you six mentioned groups. this work one. Yeah. There were six groups, and two of them were actual bands. Two of them were just like recorded music. And then it was ours. The music? They did, uh, what's that, Top Gun? You've Lost That Loving Feeling. Oh, and know? they sang along like a cappella or um, yep. karaoke type deal? Okay. Yep, yep. And then another one, I forget the song, but they had all blow up instruments and they pretended to play. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's stupid and easy to do, I guess. But Yeah. And then the, uh, what was that theme? Like, dun, 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 dun. And they did it with kazoos. And they had little imagery in the background. Interesting. Yep. Actually, speaking of playing music, uh, when I played live in front of like 30 or 40 people, that was pretty nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Did you screw up? Did you feel it? No. It's weird. Um, I guess because... I was always the worst member of the band, as we know. Well, they but, make you uh, feel that way, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I was. And I was replacing a really good bass player. Yeah, really good. Uh, so I guess all the practices we did beforehand, I started really practicing at night. Like, really. Not like, oh, uh, practice. That bass behind you. Is that a guitar? Right. Oh, guitar. That's it. No, that's, that's, that's it. Five string? Okay, there. Oh, that's my fine, baby. Ah, uh, that's fine. him. You, Play you this bad boy. Can't hear you. Baby. Anyway, we um we did it live, and I guess that was technically my first ever playing original songs with a real band in front of actual people. Did not, you do a full you know, set. Yeah, we did uh, eight songs for us, which that was like fifty eight minutes. <laughs> wow. Because they're all like, that's the other thing. Like they're like, like one was a ten minute song, one that's like a six minute long song, one's like a seven minute long song, and it's instrumental. So I didn't know if the audience was gonna be like, wow, this is great for like ten seconds. Be like. <laughs> okay i was waiting to see like people just like walk away like this is great Gotta go. you know so i always feel there's pretty there's, into it yeah i always feel yeah. there's a break-in period like that first song for the first minute you're probably nervous you're trying to you're trying not to screw up and then after that you're just like i'm like i'm okay i'm fine and then you just yes, play through it no the problem is there's a song called bridges of time we do that has like a really hard bass part that i never quite got right in practice and i figured live in front of everyone like somewhere in the middle i'm gonna lose my touch and just start and lower my volume and hope nobody hears me screw up <laughs> yeah. i did really well and i was like i don't know it surprised me but i guess all the practice is what it was it honestly. is weird that you like the focus you gain because it's not important live but it's real well more important than the practice right yeah yeah there's an extra for certain people it's there's an extra level of focus for other people it's just they really lose their complete focus all right, so I'll ask you a question that's a branch off, but a really good question. The yeah. Philadelphia Flyers hockey team, I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Possibly. I may have. I don't. I can't. Maybe I can't. eliminated from 2018. Woo-hoo-hoo. Maybe. Did you see the uh, recent games or two? I've heard terrible things from the last right. game. I so watched I'll the second this. last game. Claude, Claude Giroux is one of my favorite players. Mm -hmm. Scored over 100 points this year. He's one of only three players to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Possible MVP. Great. 
I think they're keying on him, and that's why you know his line mates aren't having a great season. He has two assists in four games so far. Mm. I look back at his. I look back at last year. Remember, or two years ago when we played Washington, who was a number one seed or number two seed. We were seven or an eight. Mm-hmm. He scored like one goal and one assist in that whole series. Well, he's a little and undersized I, and one heavier I people. Know. So, so how can he score in the regular season? And hold on, two years prior to that is when we played the Rangers in the playoffs. I don't know if you recall. And their defenseman, Ryan McDonough and whoever else, shut him down so that he had like one goal in like six games and one assist or something. Just something ridiculous, like really bad. And I wondered, is playoff ability a real thing versus regular season? Like are some guys really better in the clutch? Is that a real thing? I think so. I always remember the teams of the past where you had – like big How about name players. Claude, you know, you know who he is? I, I know Colorado who he is. Avalanche. Oh yeah. Pest. I think he would score like eight goals a year and like twenty four assists a year. But consistent. Not a, right, right, the way he on. played was going to get him goals. goals. Well, sure, but eight goals in twenty four over eighty two games is not a lot. But mm-hmm. sure, good player in the playoffs. I think he was like a point per game player. How is that possible? I think he gets more uh, touch and go. You get a little more physical, and it's harder to break through people. If so is that mean some people are worse at that? Like Jake Voracek? Uh, he's he's flashy, sure. but he doesn't really go anywhere. Sure, but he gets points in the regular season. So what's it with playoffs that does to people? And we're saying hockey, but we can say other sports too. Like football. I feel like Donovan McNabb was a great regular season quarterback. Maybe not a playoff quarterback. That's unfair. He had a couple really big games. He had some pre- yeah, I think they, right. they keyed on him moving around so they would – Always have right. somebody it prepared for the way. Yes, a spy on the quarterback, that type deal. I'm going to change it. But go keep ahead. going. Keep going. You can go. No, I was just going to say, is that a real thing? Is clutch a real thing? It would totally destroy the idea behind analytics, which I think is stupid anyway. But I think so. Okay. But I and think what, is, what is it actually? So what is clutch? Is it just being better at the right time? Is it being better when there's more eyes watching? Is it being better... When other people are wilting, like, are they okay, but the other people are actually failing? So they're not actually getting better. Everyone's getting worse. I think it's focus and having the right set of skills to do that. <coughs> so I think there are some people that try to use finesse in situations that just need brute power. And when you have more brute power, you can, like, Lindros. Lindros was clutch because he was so overpowering in a lot of situations. It's the most powerful thing in hockey at the time. Yeah. So, like, it's shame he got knocked out early, but... I am. I don't know. Just the way it goes sometimes. I'm gonna talk about football real quick. Please do. Please. This, this goes in my corrections. So like last time, I didn't want to bring it up till the middle or end. Uh, last time we talked about how many plays in football there are. And you said there's a lot of options or a lot of blah 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 blah. So I actually looked up uh, offensive formations. There are about 16, and defensive formations there are about 15. Mm-hmm. And then offensive plays there's about 23, and defensive plays there's about five. Really? That you can do? It's, this is from Wikipedia, so you can look it up. Ding! So, total number of offensive combinations is 368. Oh, okay, that's better. I was going to say, the combinations, though. Like, you can reverse one, split a guy wide. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's nuances there that you can do. Sure, right, right. Okay, that's that's a better number. I thought you were going to say it was like 20 per game. No, 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 no. 360 sounds reasonable. Okay. So, defensive combinations are about 75. If okay. you're going to blitz, you're going to man-to-man, zone coverage, whatever. Sure. Mm-hmm. So if you multiply those together and you take the total number of offensive combinations versus the total number of defensive combinations, mm-hmm. that's about 27,000 different types of plays. That can happen on a field? Yep. In one so, play. So one of 27,000-ish ish things mm-hmm. will happen on a play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess... From when you line up, you can probably narrow down 20,000 of them. Yeah, because you can see the right. defensive combination. You can sure. narrow it down to whatever. Right, and then your offense, you control the offense, so you're narrowing down another 5,000. So, I mean, within reason, you can narrow it down pretty well. But but otherwise, there's 27-ish, 1,000-ish combinations for a play to go down. Yeah, so I extrapolated that even further. Oh, man. So there's about 65 plays a game. Okay. And in a game season, there are, there are 256 games in total season. That's every team playing each other. 16 games right. times 16, I think. 
Yep. No, that makes sense. You have to play 16 games. So you have Wait, 30 teams, isn't it? Well, whatever. Yeah, right, but they play each other. Games. Sure. 16 games, 16 times. Yeah. Right. So there's about 16,000 total plays in a season. Mm-hmm. If you were to not repeat plays, then you could see every possible play there would there in is. a year, in, in two a year? years, two years. Oh, okay, all right, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. But they would probably repeat the same play over and over again, right? A lot would be reverses, and a lot would be this side versus that side. A lot would be this play versus zone, this play versus man. Yeah, and hmm. a coach only has about a hundred pass plays and twenty running plays in this playbook. Hmm. Not Dougie P. Dougie P's got like. Oh. 105. He's got two binders worth. <laughs> He's like the dude from uh, Waterboy. Arthur Fonzarelli. Blah, blah, blah. Make the... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coach, I forget his name. Coach K? Coach, I forget. In the movie. All right. Waterboy. So that's my tangent. Let's go back to social anxiety here. Oh, I was getting nervous. I thought you were never going back there. I thought I was never going to. So I guess you're talking about what you can do. Well, I guess I'll talk about what I do. Mm-hmm. So... The things I get nervous about in meetings is like when he goes around the room. I'm always the last one. I was I guess I was always uh, the last one in school because right. I does a, suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're waiting. I have a lot. My last name begins Alphabetical with alphabetical boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, and this at the end. So yeah. I'd yeah. always be waiting. So like I just like listen to what other people are trying to say and then modify what I'm gonna say in my right. head. You're about to. Mm-hmm. You're like you're like what was met with good phrase mm-hmm. that. Yep. So what was I, shrugged? Mm-hmm. Not gonna use that. I used I to care more, which is impossible to change in your mind. <laughs> a little bit, but you, you said I used to care more, so you did change it. Yeah, so I reduced the amount of caring. And then and have also, you gotten better because you don't care? A little bit. Also, okay. not, not doing things verbatim, not trying to repeat what you say. Like in your mind, you're recording it. You can't, you can't verbatim nope. say it. It's nope. almost impossible. Then once you're two words off, now you're trying to catch the third word. And or someone asks you a question. Behind. Yep. Right, you're, you're thrown way too off. You got to, mm-hmm, I agree that and you gotta just listen to like your heart go you gotta get get a little tense get a little excited yeah it's gonna happen right yeah and then Ride take it. a nice deep breath because the nice deep breath kind of calms you down oh yeah extra some oxygen in your body mo too it's mo too yeah, yeah. yeah I like it's this. like it's on an airplane life. on an airplane they have heightened levels of o2 in the uh the gas mask bad, bad timing mm-hmm. well yeah because it that landed in philadelphia didn't it, <laughs> it, it, it so there's really a hole in that damn plane and so did someone get sucked out so what happened is she got half sucked out, and she's, so the was she played in the hole, or she yeah, wait did she she or she died? Yeah. Oh no, it's a shame. So we can't yeah we can't tell any jokes about it, but but I don't know what happened. Like was she towards the window, a big hole in the window area, and she got sucked halfway out, like to her feet, and I think the mm-hmm. crew pulled her back in and tried to do CPR on her, but I think the blades messed her up, or the, the fuselage, or she hit something pretty hard. I would imagine the blade is probably right near her. So if, if she if she didn't get hit by the blade, then getting sucked out of the air, like that's got to mess you up. Yeah, it's but I guess it's unit. also real quick. I, I imagine you have no idea. It's over. Maybe. Depends what part of your body gets sucked out. Your and face. Stu- your, uh, was it her face? Yeah. Oh, man. It was her front half, yeah. Oh, that's, that's why she probably died. The asphyxiation, maybe. Yeah, could be. Anyway, um think and see this is the problem with social media and everything recorded and a million conversations being recorded every day is now they're like southwest was told by one engineer that they should tech check the blades after one year yeah and southwest said, no. screening sure i don't think you're gonna do that to every blade no exactly exactly but the fact that someone died and this story's out here of course they're gonna run together you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there so will be a counter story for every story that we see i feel like there's another level of focus there as well because i listened to the um the pilot talking to the ground Mm -hmm. they had a recording of it and the pilot was extremely calm so there's a a period where you're like he might not know also do do you think he knew someone was sucked out it was she i have no idea i think she knew oh okay did she she said someone got okay yeah she she said they needed medical assistance so i'm I'm pretty sure someone okay she probably did know okay yeah, but there's a there's a level there where like you're doing your day job, and then there's like an oh shit, like I need to focus. I know like everything's going on, and then you're like you're going a mile a minute trying Here's to figure things out. You. Do you how do you do in crises? This is interesting because uh, my dad is really calm, and my mom is the complete opposite. Yeah, she's. I'll I'll, get, I'll tell a story about my mom here. <laughs> so we're going on a trip to uh, Italy, 
and we're waiting for the plane. And my mom had lost her ticket to get on the plane, but we're waiting for it. So we're not in line yet. So my mom runs over to the kiosk to, to get another ticket. So we're waiting for her to get back to our group because we didn't move from the same spot. And then we look over and my mom is almost boarding the plane. She's already in line boarding the plane. And we're like, she's like looking around nervously, thinking that we're already she didn't on the see plane. Anyone. Yeah. <laughs> she thought everyone left and she was like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. I'm behind them. Yeah. So that, that I get that feeling. Like, I think I'm a little bit of both. Like I get that feeling that like I sense. should be nervous, but in the real scheme of things, if you're really calm and just take it easy, like things will just work out fine. If you're like, except think, once in a while, how about this? an approaching wave of water or an approaching animal or something crazy coming towards you. What if the one guy's like, hold on, let's see what's going on here. I'm not so crazy. And then like one guy's like, I'm friggin' running and he's running in full speed. And the guy who's like, Hey, I just wanted to talk to you. And the animal just plows through and kills him instantly. It's like I a could rhino. See, I could see you know like the mean? expert being like, for yeah, these yeah. bears, you have to stand your ground and make sure that they – and, and then just like <laughs> – And the guy who ran first is still like, yeah. oh, my God, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I mean that's the danger of the calm person, right? Yeah. Yeah. The overly calm that everything's going to be fine. Right. 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 Because in reality, you don't know that everything will not be fine because the people who thought everything was going to be fine are probably already gone and dead in the past. And will be dead in the future. Yeah. Let's yeah. bring nihilism around. Woo! Everyone's yeah. dead. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't Happy matter. Go lucky. I um, this is weird. Uh, I'm 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 a very calm person when crises hit. I don't know. I'm just like, yo, everybody, stop. Mm-hmm. I was driving to our house we moved out of because we had it for another two weeks because of the lease to go clean up. Mm-hmm. It's like dusk, and I drove uh, back the old road. It's only like an eight minute, ten minute drive. And I'm behind this car, and it's supposed to be making a left at this real – it's a real weird intersection. It's like at angles, and like you got to go up the hill to make a left. And I'm like, what is this jackass doing? And I'm like honking. I honked at it twice because the light was green and no one was coming. I was like, come on. It's getting dark. And I lowered my music after I honked, and I heard kids yelling. And I was like, what the hmm. hell? So I put my, my Jeep in park, and I walked out, and I was like – is this person like asleep on their wheel, like dead or like, you know, passed out or drunk or who knows? And as I get closer, there's three kids screaming and I go over there and it was a woman in her like thirties or so just slumped over the wheel like this and she can't move, but her foot must be on the brake. I look in the back at the minivan and there are three kids aged like five, seven and nine ish. I don't know. And they're screaming and they're asking for help. And now I'm like alone in the intersection. I'm like, hey, can I help you? Huh. I'm like, what's going on here? I'm trying to figure this out. And I remember I touched the woman because I didn't want to like push her or grab her. I don't know if she just yeah. got hit. I don't know what's up. You just murdered her. I touched her. I said, yeah, yeah. Your fingerprints are over. <laughs> Shoot it. <laughs> um, Somehow there's a gun her. in your head. She, did, she, she looked up at me like this and like seizure. drools. And I was like, I, I think it was a seizure type look to her. Uh-huh. I was like, I had no freaking idea said, hey, kids, can you talk to me? And they said, yeah, yeah. And all three were talking at once. And I was like, I'm not going to get an answer. I was like, is your mom or whoever okay? And they were like, ah, they're all yelling at once. I was like, hold on. I called 911. I was like, I'm at an intersection. There's a lady out. And they're like, is she okay? Is she hurt? Did she get hit? And I was like, I don't know. Just send someone. And they're like, is she? Is her car okay? And I'm like, I guess. I don't see any dents. It was just the weirdest thing because I couldn't answer any question she asked. And I said, please send help. And I'm talking to the kids, and they're like, there are three kids here. They need help, too. Is the engine still running? And they're like, has her foot oh, on yeah. like the brake or the park? Yeah. I um, I put it in park. I reached over her and put it in park because I was like, oh, she's going to let go like in the middle of all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm talking to the kids, and I said, did your mom get hit? Did you guys get hit by a car? And two of them say yes. One says no. And then I said, uh, did, did a car hit you? I asked again. And they all said no. And so I said, okay, well, did, did any other car bump your car? And they all said yes. And then one said no. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so, and this is while 911 asked me a question. I was like, this, this is and, <laughs> exactly. <group> consensus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And she's like, did someone hit their car, sir? Do you know what's going on, sir? And I was like, I have no idea. Hmm. Anyway, uh, eventually cops showed up and stuff. And uh, I don't know. 
Did they tell you to leave because you weren't part of the accident? Exactly. That's that's the amazing thing is like cops probably deal with that all the time. I saw, right. I, what was I going to say? But at the same time, I wanted to know what happened. Are these kids okay? Was she a druggie and she's a bad parent? Was she totally fine and someone hit her and then they left the scene and then she had a seizure a minute later or something? I have no idea. Was Are the kids okay? Is everyone okay? I, I don't know. And I wish I could know that stuff, but there's no way to yeah, know. You can't trace back. And that's not going to show up in a police report. You know what I mean? Like you can't go on the reporter or whatever and mm-hmm. check the report. So I'd be like, woman found at Allentown-ish, road-ish. Which is a real road, but it's nearby. Yeah, I I was like a minute behind someone getting T-boned. And their car was still mm-hmm. in the intersection. And I think a teenager had hit them. So the teenager was off to the side crying and just being hysterical. And no one pulled over. So I pulled over. Mm-hmm. And the woman was still in her car, just like holding on the steering wheel. And I was just like, "You're fine there. Just stay right there." And as was soon she as bleeding, right? she was like, "Just like shook. she was just shocked, she shook the hell, yeah. right, right, right." And the moment the cop pulled up, he was like, "Did you see the accident?" And I said, "No." And then he's like, "Okay, you can get out of here." Like, like <laughs> the... <laughs> you're like, "I just was helping her, or yeah. someone else. Do you need me to?" And you're like, "Okay." You feel like you should do something, but you don't know what you should do. So the cop knows, just control the situation, and like minimize. Right, the but craziness. I guess. In- his eye, he wants as few people as possible involved. Yeah. Like, he doesn't know if you broke up with your wife. You just had a bad day. You had a great day. He doesn't know if you're horny. He's like, whoa, <laughs> what's going on over yeah. here? Like, he doesn't know He doesn't know you from Adam. He's like, just, yeah. you're not involved. Please leave. Do you, think, do you think a cop assumes that most people are positive or negative or like he – like good Samaritans, you shouldn't like mm. try to find I think anything cop, wrong with I them. I think a cop thinks a person tries to inject themselves into the narrative. Hmm. Like they try to. I important. saw the murder. Like yeah, yeah. They're like, I saw the murder, and he's like, "What'd you see?" And they're like, "Well, they were already dead." He was five foot he's two, like, three, Christ. or maybe seven inches six. <laughs> seven, I can't tell. He was seven foot eight. I don't know. He was bigger. Skin was kind of dark to lightish. Lightish. He was. I saw him in the shadow. I'm pretty sure like, there was a peg leg or a cane. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the cops probably like, please, please. Yeah, you're actually more harm than good. Oh man. I just hated those like icebreakers. Oh, dude, you hate icebreakers? New, yeah, icebreakers you love are them. the best. <laughs> I hate Only them because, so much. Well, think about this. You can you can turn them into the joke. You could bullshit you, anything. Oh, yeah, but like think of the icebreaker. The icebreaker is the ultimate joke. It's like, huh, we're supposed to communicate? Talk about jack off. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. You can do whatever. I mean, if you want to slant the boss as the bad guy, you want to slant the guy, hey, the guy who made icebreakers, that he never got laid. Like, you know what I mean? You can say it to a stranger, and they'd be like, yeah, I guess you're right. What's your name? Where are you from? And what do you like? Like, <laughs> Yeah, no one says that. Or you, you tell a joke. You're like, my name's uh, Montillo Ignoia. Uh, you killed my father. I like revenge. I don't know. Something, <laughs> and someone's like, ah, I get it. And you're like, yeah, I get it. You say something like that. That would be better. Right? You have to turn the game on its head. I mean, if you have to communicate with people, just communicate like for real. I guess the difference is that I don't know, like, your icebreakers, because you went to a non engineering curriculum. My engineering curriculum with, like, people were, like, verbatim. Oh, dude. Well, that's why you have to be the not verbatim, is what I'm saying. I have to be the, the outlier. You don't have to be crazy. It's not like, I'm the goofy one. Wow. Like everyone's <laughs> There's like, the There's preset idea of what you should be. Right. You have to just do a crazy thing. That's all. It's just a one-time thing. Maybe you never even tell a joke again. How funny would that be? <laughs> you're like the guy. joke of you know, icebreaker day. You're like telling jokes. You're doing the, the double gun shooters. <laughs> you're like best friends with everyone. You're high-fiving people you never met. You're like, hey, Prez. More like Dez. Oh. <laughs> like people are going nuts. And then, like, the next day, they're like, this guy's wild. you got to meet him. And you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm working. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, super boring at work. Like, oh, huh. People are like, wow. Social like, expectations. Yeah. I mean, people don't know. You know what I mean? What are they going to do? Hold you to some weird – no, you were funny. Yeah, they, they, hold, they, have funny. Piece of, <laughs> they have a piece of paper like, you were funny on ice break day. You have to be funny again. <laughs> what are they going to do? You know? See, I could see doing that. Like, the problem is, like, motivation there. Like, the whole motivation, your motivation would probably be to, like, get, like, the live in the party. Like, that's your drive. My drive would be, you like, just. drive is? No, 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 It's not the live in the party. I want to see what people do. Oh, the reaction. 
Yeah, that's my favorite part. The, the Some people are like, cycle. oh, oh, offended. They're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Some people are like, they're like, I'll be double funny. And they double down. And they say, like, big dick sucks. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> we got a live one, folks. We got a curse word over here. This guy's saying curse words. Uh, but you like, got to go I mean? early. You got to go first. I never got to go first. Ah, uh, that's me. That's, that's the another problem, too. I can't get the reaction out of people. Oh, shit. My whole life. Is geared Dude, towards being the thing. last person, yeah. People in the first half of the alphabet are funnier or like more not funnier, um, more apt to social interaction than people at the last half. Well, name like some of your funniest comedians. <sighs> the Chad Berg is actually he was not funny. Well, he was funny, but not socially. He yeah, he yeah. Dane Cook is a C. Dane Cook, yeah. Jim Gaffigan's yeah. kind of funny. Yeah, that's a G. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Rock. No, that's R. Carell. Steve Carell. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's a C. I don't know. I'd have to do some research. You know yeah, what I'm we're going to have to come back with this one. We're going to have to come back with this one. Comedians' hmm. names and then the average like distri- distribution. Maybe that's my uh, next week's research project. You can do it. If anyone can do it. Hmm. Hmm. So we're talking about like things that help your cause when you're trying to do uh, social anxiety-ish stuff. There's a word for stuff that does not help you, but you do anyway. Like you bite your nails or you blink or habits. Did we talk about that in a previous episode? Uh, or is that I was going to bring this up at habits, but it never came up. So palliative, mm-hmm. pal- palliative, uh, I guess you'd call them like habits, palliative habits. So like mm-hmm. if you like chew your nails or you're like bite your lip or you're blinking it, rapidly. Um, um, yeah, like things like that don't actually help you when you're trying to do like public speaking. But they help. Not, they they mentally somehow like trigger you to to feel better, even though you don't do better. So you I think, think they're, they're I think they're time killers to you and mental, to the yeah, other mentally part. distraction mental distractions. Right, right, right. right. Like they fill up a, a space where you're going up. instead of just going like this. I think we should uh, go to the store and like you know what <laughs> I mean. He does the face. Then you're like, I think we should. Go to the store. Maybe we should. Uh, you sound exactly dog. like one of my uh, my sister's bosses. I fixed one oh. of his, his computers, and his name was Barry. And Barry was older, and he looked like maybe a, um, I say like a Bohemian Santa Claus. He had, <laughs> <laughs> he had this like long white mane and a beard, but he had, like really like dark skin. But he wasn't like he was, I don't know what he was. Um, I, <laughs> I don't something. know what he, he was. Something. He was something. But like in the middle of a sentence, he would just like, uh, so I was telling your sister to go and do, and then he'd just like, <laughs> see do that's the paperwork the, for it. Yeah. And see, come that's back. the other damn thing. You know, when people <laughs> talk about what makes me nervous at work or social anxiety. And then you look at some of the bosses and you're like, that guy's a great age. Yeah. He doesn't even finish sentences. He's a boss. <laughs> <laughs> like that that should make you feel like no matter what you do, you're finishing a damn sentence. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. That yeah. stuff that stuff helps my cause. That's There's no rhyme matters. or reason to who's in charge and No, not. and that's how you have to really look at it, be like, I'm not sure. I this guy's know. the CEO. He's just been here the longest. It's like <laughs> <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> his literal only redeeming quality was that he was here for a long, long time. time. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's really good at being here for Consistent. a long time. <laughs> yeah. He's really good at being here. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the last thing, what what do you think about stuttering? I find it fascinating that singing cures stuttering. So people can't stutter when they sing. Is that? Yeah. Did you wait? Do you know this? I don't know this one. Kids who stutter, um, oftentimes they ask them to repeat like a song, like especially real bad stutters, like ones who can't get through a whole set. Like you know, they're King's like, speech? Every, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you ask them to sing a song they know, Contra. they can sing it. Uh-huh. Like, they just sing it. They don't stutter. They don't stop. They got a rhythm going. They just start going. I guess. And they they think, uh, from what I've read eight years ago, I haven't read any research on it recently, so it's all probably outdated, all wrong. You can correct me in the comments. I think a different part of the brain is used for music than speech, I guess. Huh. And so... A vocal melody is more a melody than it is a vocalization, if that makes sense. That does kind of make sense. What I'm curious about is, so most people are socially anxious because they're thinking about what other people are doing. 
Mm-hmm. So if you had a, like two stutterers trying to talk to each other and they had never met before, do you think that the other one, do you think that they'd be perceive the other, each other as mocking each other when they're trying to talk normally, but they're stuttering anyway, because they're like permanent stutterers. Not after like five sentences. So you're talking about like the first two sentences, like, you, you think doing? they'd hate each other immediately yeah, and then like be like, well, but what, what, wait, 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 you're up. <laughs> you're, <laughs> and they both you. stutter, you stutter, you stutter, stutter. That's possible. Best friends. That'd be awesome. <laughs> BFF, A-E, A-E, A-E. Are you stuttering? No. And never, and never, and never. <laughs> okay. A-E, A-E, Hmm. Do you have anything to add? No, I mean, that makes sense. Um, the only thing I will say is social. So I look at my kid right now, and he's not even in kindergarten yet. And um, he could care less what the other kids do. He's like best friends with some kid named Matthew. I don't even know who Matthew is. I'm looking out for you, Matthew. Okay? You mess with my kid. <laughs> but um, right now, he doesn't care. Like, if I ask him, he'll talk about the kids. Like, how, how was your day? Okay, good. You know, whatever. They don't care. Ooh, is your friend Matthew there? Yes, Matthew funny. You know, he's very funny. You know, I'm like, okay, okay. Well, what's funny about him? I'm like, I don't get it. What's, what's so funny about How do you other, see him? Yeah. He's their kid. And he's like, uh, and he doesn't really have an answer for me. But like, I feel like in two years, he'll, he'll jump to one year, maybe even. I don't know. Like here, um, my son's cousin is one year older exactly. And she called me today. And it was her first day of regular school. Uh huh. And I was driving and talking to her. I was like, I can't talk. I got to go. And she's like, Uncle Nicky, Uncle Nicky. And, you know, she's telling me about her day. And I was like, okay, how was your day? And I have a new friend named Tyler, Owen. It's Owen. Oh. And she, right. And I, and I was like, well, what's, what's so great about Owen? Is he funny? She's like, no, not really. And I was like, well, what is he? Is he cool? Is he nice? Is he, I don't know. Is he cute? I can't ask a four-year-old if he's cute. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, it's just so weird. Like, it's starting. And then by five and six, I imagine they'll be able to tell you not just tell me, but they'll be able to recognize what they like in their friends. Like at three or so, it's like just anyone who listens to you is your friend. Four and five, it's anyone who likes the same stuff as you or you can make laugh. But then by like 10 and 12 and stuff, it gets very complex. And then by like 15, 16, the friend is more important than the family, which is crazy to me. But that's where I was, right? Is that where you were, like 15, where you're like, Mom and Dad, you don't understand. My friends get it. Like, do you know what I mean? It's such a weird thing that you think that's that's at that point in your life, strangers are more important than your family. One of the statistics was that social anxiety is set right after puberty because kids mm-hmm. before that time don't have any drive to do anything other than just to enjoy themselves. Exist. Enjoy yeah. themselves. Once you have right. that like sexual connection, tension, and all oh. that stuff. Then it like becomes more awkward and you're trying to compete and right. You're looking for ladies. You're trying to impress. That's where the, that's where the most socially awkward conversations crop up. Uh, This is the, uh, this is the part of the podcast that's painful. (laughs) Mm. I'd say I, have the worst time, well, the worst hitting on women. That's just tough. So (laughs) the worst time I've had, Going after women was probably in college. Even though our high school was all men, I had more women in high school than I had. Wait, your smart school? Were you? Did you have a wingman? I, is he a goalie? That's the, the goalie. Pro- that that's the problem. Is that the wingman I had? There was probably was like it the a, goalie we know? They'd rotate through. I'd have like five friends, and like two uh-huh. of them were able to to do normal speech to talk normally about women. <laughs> Other ones, they would drag you down or not have anything to say or they do something awkward. So, like, mm. I remember going to the gym and, like, there are attractive women at the gym. And the ratio was terrible. It was probably, like, a, a one to three ratio of, Which like, way? women and men. So, like. One to three men. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Like, it's the opposite, but I didn't. You never noticed. Oh, huh? you didn't capitalize. No, I, no- I noticed. I didn't capitalize. I was dating someone who I. Hmm. Whatever, for like two of the years of college. So. But like anyway. you go to the gym and like you have to awkwardly break into their exercise routine, which they probably don't like anyway because there's so many men that probably do that anyway. And that's right. already like the tension that builds up before you even talk to them. You can't do it at the gym. No, you so, can't do it at the gym. You can do it at the gym if you you're A and X and you're like 
You have to you have to like say hi and that's it and just like here's here's the problem. Make them aware of you. In my brain. If you're not the most physically powerful specimen and attractive and something else, you gotta add like, a layer. Yeah, you gotta. Then you're just kind of messing up their workout routine. Yeah, it's hard. It's the, you know what I mean. It feels strange until you find somebody that actually like. It's weird because people may actually genuinely like you, and mm-hmm. then you just need to break into their bubble. But other people don't care about you at all, and like breaking into their bubble is impossible. So they're just like right, right, right. You. Right, 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 right. You, you won't know until you try. Yeah. Or they try, or vice versa. You don't know who's supposed to try. Or you say That's something crazy... awkward, like uh, I could tell certain women like me because of the way, like even like regardless of the situation, their temperament was always the same. There was one biology class where we had to like test your own pee or something, and like for some reason there was like we all went to the bathrooms to pee in a cup, and like there was conversation on the way back with this one woman about uh, God knows what. But it was like we had a conversation while we we're holding our respective <laughs> pee. <laughs> it's like <laughs> she likes me. There's no way Did that she switch? doesn't like me. That would have been the best if you switched. Yeah. It's like a trade. You should have said that. You're not gonna pass that drop. <laughs> Dump it now. Dump it now. <laughs> it's your last chance. So I'm curious if you've ever failed horribly. Oh my god! All the time. There you go. You, you're under some assumption. I'm I'm bad with women. And that's like that's like <laughs> a because I don't care enough. Like, I, but I do. Mm. I'm like I don't care. Please, please, please. I don't care. <laughs> Just try harder. I'm not gonna try harder. I'll try harder. Like you know what I mean? I'm like always in between those two states. Like that's just where I am. And I realize that there are some things I can never compete with. Like I never. It's the guy at the party that's like almost like six and a half feet tall and just goes, oh, and then all the women are just like, oh, look at that. Right. There will always be that one guy. And I realized this because one of my best friends in college, Dan, he was that guy. He, um, he was that guy. Like he was like, I guess a super good looking guy with like super good looking hair. And we would go to hockey together and it would be like a Wednesday or a Thursday. And he'd be like, do you want to go to the bar? I'd be like, we we stink like our hockey gear. Like we got to go home, shower and throw on some nicer clothes. Maybe like that. Nah, just trust me. And we go to the bar and I trust him. And all <laughs> these girls were trying to talk to him. I know it was good. Right. And they would like, they'd be all over him. And I was like, I stink. And they're like, yeah, you stink. Then they'd be like all over him. They're like, Oh, it's not a stink thing. You just like this guy. I don't yeah. Know. I, I don't know what doubt. it is. Right. And some guys have it. Some guys don't. I didn't have it. So, so, and that's the other thing. I didn't understand anyone, anyone out there who says I got a move or a line. It doesn't work. What? That doesn't no, change who you, you are. Like, no. do you imagine it? Can you imagine if the nerdiest person ever was like, is that a mirror in your pants? Because like <laughs> reflective <laughs> properties. <laughs> like, I, <don't> <laughs> I can't know. see myself in them. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But either way, do you think a girl's like, wow, he said such a funny one line. He's mine. Like, no one would ever do that. That's so weird. I guess that depends on the type of woman you're going after, too. Is that so, the women you probably like are want to be intellectuals with? The, they buy that That's line, the, and you'd be like, "No, not gonna." Happen. Are they are they out shopping on a Thursday at like 10 p.m. at the local bar to grocery store? <laughs> oh, mm. grocery store. You know something? Mm. Just wait by the beer aisle. <laughs> 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 Buying some alcoholic beverages, are you? Huh? Oh, over 21. Kaiser, I'm gonna follow I see you. Right <laughs> oh, oh, I just said the wrong line. Damn it! Uh, I'm gonna oh. Follow you home. <laughs> oh, I guess Barely. I'll see. You. Oh, I won't. <laughs> That's my. I would fuck up every single line and then be like, God damn it! It's interesting though. The like the one woman I ended up marrying, like no. there's instant connection, and then I saw her at the grocery store. She was looking at. Uh, she was in the meat aisle. And I, I like I, I don't know if I said anything about like hey you checking out this meat and then like I feel like I feel like I did and then she asked me to do something and I said I want to do that <laughs> like, yeah I'm tough guy alert yeah I was like I don't want to do that but I will watch a movie with you so it was like it's very casual and and easy and maybe that's supposed to happen maybe you get like She's the like, right I feedback got it all. right you have to there's a medium it's not mm-hmm. fireworks romance novel type stuff i no. mean there is that stuff but it's not like it happens in the movie no no that's stupid if you wait for that yeah we ain't no 50 shades 
I Are will you? say one thing about different type of anxiety. It's still mm-hmm. social anxiety, but so this is a real story. So I went to this this pizza shop that just opened up. We like literally my wife and I, we were the first customers and we got a free slice of pie. At the end of the meal, he says, It would help me a lot if you just, you know, post it on Yelp and say how much of a great meal you had. I'm not a Yelp guy. Yeah. yeah. I didn't put anything on Yelp about him. What do you got what do you got to um log into to use your Yelp account? Google or something? I'm not a Yelp guy. I don't have Yelp. Then, but it's it's based on an account. You don't, or do you have to sign up for Yelp to do it? I don't I don't use Yelp. I didn't even look at it, dude. <laughs> well, how do you I know it's not sh- just okay, go ahead. I just not I never po- I've never posted about a restaurant on Yelp. Ever. <laughs> so I go back there a second time because it was good pizza. And and I'm having the pizza. The guy comes out again, and he's like, "Oh, you're my first customer." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I know you." And I remembered you. That's yeah, pretty yeah. cool. He's like, "Thank you for posting on Yelp." And I like, "Well, I can't tell you the honest answer that I didn't do it." So I'm like, "Yeah, no problem." I guess he doesn't know. He doesn't know yeah. your name. That's awesome. But I like that. You should have been like, "Hey, kickback." <laughs> <laughs> Free slice of pie, huh? Yeah. And you gave Free me one pie? the first time, didn't you? Mm-hmm. But now every time I go in there, he knows exactly who I am. He thinks I promote. No, he business. thinks he knows who you are, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks you're someone else. He's probably, oh my God, this is even worse. He probably goes to the first review that was positive, thinks it was you, clicks on their picture, clicks on their link. It's probably like, this person's great. Hmm. Uh, bravo, Chavez. Chavez is my man. And you're like, uh, my name's not. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Now Thanks. I have to live up to that false idea of who I am every time I go in to get a pizza. Hmm. To shake his hand, smile at him, and say, "Oh, that's you're had great <laughs> it, business." It's delicious. Um, what I will end this on is that as you're like five and six, there's that who cares thing. Maybe even seven and eight, you become aware that some people are different, and you hate them because they're different. Like it's the most vicious hate ever. It's like hmm. kids beat up kids. Like people think like kids are the purest thing in the world. Kids are awful. They are terrible. They bite right. each other and. Yeah, oh no, they, they extra. I'm using the wrong word, but extra they, extra word? fervor. No, no, where you leave someone out of a group. Oh, uh, uh, extra dict. Mm. Ex, uh, excommunicate. Thank you. That'll work. I don't think that was a word, but that'll work. Excommunicate like one kid because he has a pimple or something, like, or he has like a. Hey guys, I have a problem with my right foot, and they're like, "B, we hate you." <laughs> it's the right foot, left foot group. I'm like, they're like, oh, that's not nice. But like, then you get to an age where hormones are going crazy, and you don't like the kids who aren't as attractive. And then college comes around. Either way, there's groups. There's groups. You're you're always in and out of groups. I find. So now that we're on the other side of thirty, the groups have changed. There's no groups. There's just parents and not parents. So this is interesting. I'm going to a concert with my music friends tomorrow. Oh. And it's like my old music buddies. Like we used to we used to smoke, drink, go hard, like let's party. And now I feel like we're all adults with families except for your friend Mike. And we're trying to figure out. <laughs> How you well, no, no, no. We're trying to figure out like when we go to a concert together, it's like a big deal. It's like, hey, uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while, dude. Uh, can I drink a beer in your car? I'm like, do, I, I don't know them anymore. Hmm. Like, I, have they I become different people? You, I don't know. Have they? I talk to them once every eight weeks. Like, do you know what I mean? Huh. It's a weird That's thing. Free, right? You're restricted, now. and it that happens to everyone over thirty, I imagine, maybe forty. So sad. But it, but before I get all caught up in it, I'm sure it happened to. My parents. When you're growing up, weren't you like, why don't my parents have more friends? Like, you know what I mean? It's like there's really no it was because out, really. <laughs> really it was because of me. It was a bad kid. It's you know what fault. I mean? Yeah, it was. But like, I'm always like, I have friends. I can't wait to call my friend and talk to him on the phone. Hey, mom and dad, my best friend is gonna be my best friend for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, I feel like telling them that when I was like 14 or 18 or something. But like, as a 40 or 38 year old or 37 year old, I'm gonna be like, friends are the worst. Yeah, talk to them. I'm like, it takes up your time. Me. Take up your uh, time. They moved on. They're very into Trump and this whole David Hogg thing. And you're like, I'm not into it. Weird interests that don't make any right, sense. Right, right, right. But it, over the course of a life, you're going to find those things happen, right? Yeah. You're gonna so is the new friend someone who just used to be your friend? I don't know. Hmm. 
on Facebook, all your uh, grade school friends? Are they still your real good friends? No, I don't use any of them. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, I will bring Just up. Something. Go ahead. Jackfruit. <laughs> you gonna? You with me on jackfruit? I I glanced at jackfruit. It was disturbing. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I brought up an image here. Mm-hmm. So. The hulking Ooh. fruit yields sweet, delicious pods that taste like banana, it's mango, hulking. and pine <laughs> hulking. Because it's fucking massive. It is hulking. It is hulking. Banana, mango, and pineapple, which is accurate. It does taste Did a little bit it? like You've banana, had mango, it? pineapple. Yeah, I, yeah. I bought. So this thing weighs 10 pounds, and it costs Shoot. about a dollar a pound. So I spent 10 bucks on this thing. Oh, yeah. I thought it'd be interesting, and I was wondering, like, I'm, why did I never see this before? Regular good? Yeah, it's perfect it to share with friends. Wayne. Area? Yeah, I know. I saw that was my favorite part of the whole thing. You showed me. Share with friends. Winky wink. So this thing, I'm gonna skip right to a picture of it, and I'm showing a picture of it. So like, mm-hmm. it has this like spiny exterior. So like, it's not like you can like pocket the thing. It's massive. Like you could put it in a backpack. It's bigger than a water watermelon. <laughs> it's impossible. You can, sharing it with friends causes you pain because it spikes your fingers. And then I also noticed that it only sat on my counter for like two days. It got bad. It went bad. Well, the spiny parts of it, like, I guess it's impossible to clean because it's spiky. Mm-hmm. So, like, it started growing like weird stuff on the bottom and like it's kind of mold. I'm out. Like, no. I'm out. You're out before you even got to the, uh, the jackfruit the, part? The, the delicious uh, pineapple mango <laughs> banana part. It was weird that those round brown things in it or they the fruit part is nuts. that the part you eat? they were nuts i don't think you eat the okay nuts. so you don't eat okay cool, i got cool. a reaction i, was, I had no nut. idea <laughs> Oof, don't eat too nut. much nut yeah too much nut though yeah the weird part is that also the interior is like sap from a tree so they they tell you to like dip your knife in like vegetable oil and i was like that's weird until you cut into it and then you get the sap on your hands and you're like son of a <laughs> they knew. This is the most impossible fruit to eat. Weird. It's just such a weird. It sounds like such a manufactured inbred fruit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. They it's, try to get the best of everything, but it's like a little bit of the best, but a little bit of the worst of everything, too. I think of the reverse. Maybe it's the only fruit that hasn't been manufactured in a way that's edible. <laughs> like, you, you wrap that, that's... like, like the, the seed is covered by this the fruit part of it that you can actually eat. If they hmm. could make it like a banana or like an apple where you could just it would bite be edible. it. Yeah, it'd be edible and I, people would like it. I wouldn't eat it. Like, I think it tasted okay. Interesting. It was mm. interesting and like, I could nibble on it as like a jerky, but mm. not as a fruit. If it had super good health reasons or effects, you'd be like, mm, I'm okay with this. Yeah. But because it doesn't, you're like, I don't, I don't say it. Mm. So... Yeah, don't enjoy it with friends because you have to carry it and cut it open, and then they'd have to be disgusted by all the sap on their hands. Interesting. Well, jackfruit really sums up the podcast, I'd say. Jackfruit. Yeah. Thanks for listening. I appreciate. It. I appreciate all the listeners. I appreciate it more. Just put a note there. I'm Panner Nick. Appreciate it more. I don't know about that one. Thank you. Yeah. We do like you. We like you. A lot.